In this tutorial, we'll learn about object instances in Blender. It helps us to create numerous such copies of any object and distribute them over some surface area. You may think of the array modifier for this same purpose, but we'll soon discover that the array modifier may not always work, especially for complex objects or a group of objects. We need object instances in those cases. And this instancing gives us some additional functionalities that we'll also discuss in the later part of this tutorial. So here is our coin. Although it is one single object, it has got multiple parts, and they have disjoint geometries without any intersection. If you have such an object, and you try to make its copies using the array modifier, you may run into some issues. It will work only for simple objects without any standalone part. But let us try with this and see what problem can arise. So with this array modifier, let us make 5 copies of the coin, and we'll change the x factor to say 1.5. Then apply the modifier. So we got a set of 5 coins here. Now, we want to separate them and create 5 individual objects from this. For that, we have to go to the edit mode. While all the vertices are selected, let us go to the mesh menu. And under separate, we separate the objects by loose parts. It divides the target object into several individual pieces, but as you can see in this outliner panel, we have got so many objects created from the set of 5 coins. Here we were expecting only 5 separate objects. But Blender has created one object for each individual part of each coin, because they had separate disjoint geometries, and we got this huge list. So this option is not very useful for such an object. As you can see, after we separated the objects, each part of the object is converted into a standalone piece like this. Of course we can join them back, and create one single object again. In the object menu, the join option will put all those parts back into one object. But if we have hundred of such copies, we cannot do this one by one for each set. We should rather use the method of instancing and create such copies more easily, without breaking them into separate pieces. We'll now learn about that, and as we have mentioned, it has got some other features as well. Let us start with the same base coin as before. We'll create several copies of this coin here. So first we have to add a simple plane. Let us enlarge it by a factor of 10. Now, we need to subdivide this. So go to the Modifiers tab and add one, Subdivision Surface Modifier. Switch over to the Simple option, then increase the levels to 3 or 4, and apply the modifier. In the Wireframe View mode, we can see how the plane got divided into several such tiles, there are total 64 tiles. We'll enable Object Instancing for this plane, so go to this Object Properties tab. Scroll down to this section, called Instancing, and expand it. Instancing always remains disabled by default, so we have to first enable this by either selecting the Vertices option, or the option of Faces. Let us go with this Face option. Once this is enabled, and let's say we attach a child object to this plane, a copy of that object will be created here, on each face or each tile of this plane, so we'll get 64 such copies created, for any object that we attach to this plane, through a parent-child relation. And more subdivisions will give you more such copies. Now, before we do anything, we need to apply its scale factors. So go to the object menu, and let us apply the scale. Then select our coin object. In the object properties tab, expand this section called, relations. In this parent field, we have to select the plane. So as a result, you can see how the coin instances are created here, for each tile of the target plane. But they are quite big in size, we need to resize them. So select this collection, and in the object properties, go down to the instancing section. You have an option here, scale by face size. Let us enable this. Now, we get this scale factor. If we slowly decrease this value, the coins will get smaller in size. Let us go for a factor of 0.15. So we got the object instances created for the coin. We'll now convert them into separate individual objects. So go to the object menu and under apply, select this make instances real. Now, you can see in this outliner that we got several individual coins created. If we check the number, we'll see that there are exactly 64 objects. So all the parts of a single coin are kept together as one single object. In order to manage these coins better, you may like to move them into a separate collection. So let us create a new collection. We will rename this, 
maybe as coins. Now, let us select all the coins together. Then, we can move them into the new collection. So, all 64 coins are now grouped under this. And while the coins are all selected together, go to the Object menu, and under Set Origin, select Origin to Geometry. So each coin will have its origin at its geometrical center, which may be helpful for you. Now you can safely delete the original coin. You can also delete this plane, if you wish. The coins are no longer dependent on the plane, they are standalone objects. So this is one use of object instancing where we simply created a group of coins. Let's look at one more use case of object instancing. We have a group of objects here, which we have joined as one single object. Now we'll create copies of this set on each face of this icosphere. We have to first enable object instancing for this. So in the Object Properties tab, expand this instancing section and enable instances for faces. Now select this set of objects. And in the Relations section, we have to set up the parent object. But before that, we have to remove these location offsets, otherwise the instances will be placed far away from the surface. So let us change all of them to zero. The object will be moved back to the world origin, but that is perfectly okay. Now in its parent field, let us select the icosphere. So we can see that several instances of our model have been placed at the center of each face of this icosphere. This way you can easily create numerous copies of an object and place them over any surface area, which is not possible with array modifier. And one more thing, if you want, you can also randomize the orientation of these instances on the target object. First select the icosphere and go to the edit mode. Then go to the Mesh menu. Under Transform, we have to select this option called Randomize. Then in this operator box, you can change the amount field to alter the orientations of the faces at random. Change these settings as you need, this will basically deform the shape of our sphere, but as you can see, the object instances will remain attached to its faces. And finally, you can convert these instances into real, as we did in the previous case, and create individual objects keeping their current positions intact. We can also create object instances at these vertex points. So for this object, we'll go to the instancing section and this time enable instancing for its vertices. We want to create instances of this cone on each vertex of this icosphere. So we have to first remove these location offset values for the cone. And under relations, in the parent field, select the icosphere. So we can see that the instances of the cone are created at the vertex points, just as we wanted, but their orientation is not perfect, since they are pointing towards some arbitrary direction. We want them to be aligned with the vertex and follow the vertex normals, so we have to do two things here to rectify this. First, for the cone object, under this parenting section, you can see this tracking axis. We have to change it to positive z-axis. Then select the icosphere. And in the instancing section, we have to select this option called Align to Vertex Normal. As a result, all the cone instances will be now perfectly placed at each vertex in an outward direction. So we have covered several cases where object instances can be very useful. You can apply these methods and come up with many innovative ideas. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.